Welcome to my demonstration of drawing a flat in two dimensions in AutoCAD for the Mac 2014. I've already changed my settings uh, for units to architecture and uh, under tools, drafting settings, I've set up my grid to be three inch squares with a half inch uh, snapping. So I'm drawing a four by eight flat. First thing I'm going to do is draw a rectangle for reference and I'm going to start at my base point of zero, zero and I'm going to come up, um, I'm going to go over 48 inches and then hit tab and you'll see that this box moves uh, over where I can type in 8 feet for the height. Now that I've drawn my rectangle, it's completely outside of my window, I'm going to hit Z for zoom and then A for all and there's the entire outline. Now this is just, this is going to be the outside of the flat as well as a reference uh, for all my parts. Um, so to make a further reference, as a flat is constructed out of one by three, which is two and a half inches um, when it's laid flat, I'm going to draw a reference line two and a half inches in so I don't have to measure. So here I've hit the uh, offset tool and I'm going to type in 2.5, enter for my offset and it gives me a box inside my chosen line from before. It can also give me a box on the outside, but I'm going inside. So there's the inside. Now this is just a reference. I'm not going to use it completely. So I'm going to change its line type to something um, more referency, like a dat dash line or a dotted line. And I have to add a line type to this drawing. So I'm going to hit uh, uh, select line type here, and I'm going to go down and choose uh, this small dash line. I'm going to add that and click OK. So now this is dashed and you can see the little dashes there. So now I can start adding in my lumber. I'm just going to simply use a polyline tool. I almost always use the polyline tool as opposed to the line tool. It's more versatile. And so I'm going to put this line right there and go over and click, there we go, and hit return to end drawing that line. I'm going to put one at the bottom, actually I'm going to use a tool called the mirror tool to mirror this down at the bottom. We use the mirror tool a lot, it's much faster than trying to line things up. I have to find the center of this vertical, of this style. I'm just going to go down until I hit the triangle and there it is. See the, the grip or the snap moves up and down and there's a triangle, a little green triangle. I click on that and I draw this way and I'll show you what's happening. It's moving a copy of that line. See, there it is. That line is being mirrored from the top. If I draw a line across the flat like so, it draws, it's going to place a line here and it's asking me if I want to erase the source object, which, the, which is the top line, and I don't. So I just hit enter for no. And there it's just added the bottom line right there. Now I'm going to stick in the side lines for the styles. So I start here, go all the way down to the bottom, click, return to end, spacebar to repeat my last command, which is the line tool. Click, return to end, and now I have my four lines or my four boards. Now I need to put one in the middle for the toggle. Zoom all. Um, the center, I need a board going across. I'm going to use the double line tool as a reference and I need to justify, uh, I need to put the line in the center so I'm going to hit um, justification, J, and I'm going to do zero which is the center. And now for scale I need to change it to a two and a half inch space between the two lines. There we go. Now if I start drawing my line at the center point, where's the middle? And there it is. I get a nice wide uh, one by three. And I can stick it right there, return to end drawing the line. Now, I don't recommend using the double line tool around the outside for this, um, for these drawings, because the double line tool, double lines are restrictive in this version of AutoCAD. You can't automatically close them and such. And in fact, we're going to make this two single lines. 
It's a double line that's connected to each other. We want two single lines, so I'm going to choose the line, and I'm going to use the Explode tool, which is basically a command to tell it to separate any lines that are in the object uh, into individual lines. Explode. Now each line will be individual, just like that. There's one, there's the other. So now we have individual lines all over the place. Now we're going to need corner blocks. So a corner block goes three quarters of an inch in from the corner. Let me draw the corner block first using our polyline tool. I'll just do a, a nine inch standard size corner block. So there's nine that way, and then we want nine inches down, and then press C to close the triangle. And I want to move this corner block into the corner. Now we can use the move tool and we can tell it to move to a certain location. I can go up like this and move it to that corner and then I need to choose the move tool again and in this case I need to move it this way 0.75 and then I need to move it again I need to move it straight down 0.75 and I've moved it um, and I would have to do that in each corner and so on. I have another method that I like using. Let me just move this completely out of the way. I'll hit undo a few times. There it is. Remember how we had that outside line for the entire flat and we used the offset tool to put a line two and a half inches in? We're going to use that offset tool again, but this time we're going to type in 0.75 to give us a reference line just inside. So I'm going to take my triangle now and move, click the corner, drag it to my reference line, and there, it's three quarters of an inch in. And you'll see the reference line is all the way around, and that's going to come in handy. So let me just change this to a reference line type here, so I don't get confused that I want to keep that line. That line is going to go away. Now what we can do is we can take this, cor this corner block, and we can use that tool we used earlier, the mirror tool, Go straight to the center of our flat, come down like so, hit return to say no, we don't want to delete the old one, and now we have two corner blocks. Now here's the thing, we need to put dashed lines in here, because this line in here, we don't want that to be solid. When we're drawing this flat like this, we make a dashed line, because we won't see the lumber behind the corner block. But to make it um, dash, we have a few different choices. One, we can choose the line and we can make it shorter and then draw a new dash line. Oh, look at that. Here's a reference line from before. We could even just draw this line further back and leave the reference line. However, that's not going to really work for us, and I'll show you why. Let me pull this one back. We have this reference, but we still have to go over here to make this line longer. Um, and then we need to draw a line over here. So that could work, but it's going to be more... I have another method, so I'm just going to delete this line and get rid of it, because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to put this line back out to here, and I'm going to bring this line back up here, and we're going to end up using the offset tool again. And we're going to use it like so. We're going to choose our triangle, we're going to use the offset tool, we're going to type in, oh, that was the mirror tool, sorry, we're going to use the offset tool, there we go, we're going to type in 0.5, and now we have this little box, this, this inner triangle. So here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to use what's called the trim tool, and down here it says select cutting edges, so I'm going to select the inside triangle and the outside triangle. I'm going to hit return, and now it wants me to select the lines to be trimmed. I'm going to trim that off, this one off, and that one off. I'm going to escape. Now I'm going to get rid of this triangle. There, it's gone. Now this is the starting of our, da of our dashed line. Now let's just choose these three lines and tell it to be a dashed line. And there you have it. Now I'm not exactly thrilled about this dashed line, it's a little close together, so we have another function over here where we can have a line style and uh, scale and we can increase it. So I'm going to increase it to 4 and see what happens. Ah, that's much better. So now I have that filled in. 
So let's go over here and we're going to cut out all these three lines um, with using this triangle here and use the trim tool. I'm going to choose this triangle and I'm going to hit enter and now I'm going to cut off that and this. Now I don't have any dashed lines at all. What do you suppose is next? That's right, we've got the mirror tool again. We're going to mirror those uh, dashed lines right inside our corner block. Boom, and that's done. Now we have the bottoms to do. And we're going to pick the triangles first. And we're going to mirror those right to the bottom of our flat. There we go. Now we're going to go down here and we are going to trim out those middle lines so that we have room for our dashed lines. First of all, I'm going to zoom and then W for window. There we go. Trim. I'm going to select both triangles. There we go. Enter. Select both lines. Select both lines, escape, zoom, enter, all, enter. Now I'm going to select these guys and these guys up here. And I'm going to mirror them down to the bottom. So now we have all the dashes. Now we're still not quite done with this three quarter inch mark over here, so we're going to keep the three quarter inch reference point in there because we need to put the strap in. So I'm going to hit uh, rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to go nine inches out and two and a quarter inches up. So that's nine tab and two point two five. There's our strap. So now we're going to move our strap to the center. Let me turn off my snaps here for a second. I need to turn off my grid snap. There we go. I've now moved my that and now we have this here this little bit of line here. Let's uh, take care of that with the trim tool again. So we choose that, enter. There we go. That's nice and cleaned up. So this is a point where we use the regular line tool. Pull down a little ways. One, two, three. Escape. To finish, choose the middle one and delete it. There we go. So now let's go over here. Let's mirror this one. Actually, we'll measure mirror both of these over to the other side. Zoom into here, and we need to clip or trim out this center part. So we click on that, and there's our dash line there. Next is our diagonal brace for the bottom. So here I'm going to use the double line tool, and I'm going to start from here, somewhere right about there. I know it seems low. I'm going to turn off ortho. I'm going to go up here 45 degrees. Turn on. Uh, polar tracking. There's 45 degrees. There we go. Now we need to trim this off to the inside. So back to our trim tool. Select here. Select that one. Hit return. There goes that part. And there goes that part. So now our double line is trimmed. Now we need to put in... Uh, we need to explode this. And I'll show you why in a second. So now we need to put in our modified strap. So let's go grab one of these straps. 
copy, paste, copy, paste, there we go. Okay, so we need to get this to be at a 45 degree angle. So the rotate tool, reference the corner there, go 45 degrees, Let's move this down to where we need it. Now here's the question. How do we make sure that it's centered? We can certainly do it by eye. I mean, the carpenters in the shop are going to know what they're doing. But we would like to make sure that we're centering it. So here is a method of centering it. See, it's a little bit off-center here. So I'm going to take a line here and draw it. Snap to that one and do perpendicular. Snap to there, return. Space bar to repeat and then do a perpendicular line down here at 45 degree angles. And now we can select our rectangle and you'll see the center is ever so slightly off. So now we click on move and we click the center of our rectangle. Click again there. So now it's centered. Okay, so now we have the centered strap. We can now get rid of these two, delete those. And now we're going to choose this line for our trim boundary. Choose the line, enter, click here. We've now trimmed this off. But look, it's open here. Well, we can choose our rectangle. And over here in the properties inspector, we click on closed. And that closes that right up. So now we need to find the middle of this line. And okay, let's make sure that our object snaps are on. Okay. We're going to choose this line, this, and we're going to choose mirror. Find the middle of this. Draw across. Return, and there it is. Okay, there's the other uh, modified strap. Now is the time that I delete that reference rectangle and there is our flat.